This is a 1970 Zenith Color Portable Television. 14 tube hybrid series string set. In a previous video, probably a couple years ago, I restored this to working order, brought it back to life, and I was using it uh, maybe an hour a week. And the smoke came out about a month ago, and I kind of set it to the side. And well, when I get time, let's do a repair video on it. I don't think it's anything major. I think maybe it's the thermistor on the input or something in the power supply. Like I say, I used it about an hour a week, and it lasted a couple years. And that's probably about what you would expect uh, for something of this vintage again made in 1970 we'll get the back off well we'll put the power meter on it then we'll get the back off and have a look with my luck it'll probably just work all right let's see what happens here it'd be nice to get it to work for to be able to watch the seventh or eighth day of live commercial free non-stop John McCain media service circus coverage finale extravaganza nineteen watts I Sixteen watts, I don't even know what that would be. That's not the filaments, I don't think. The chassis is a 14 DC 15. And that's, you're looking at the bottom of the chassis there. I thought I had the schematic here for a 14 DC 15. For some reason I had these two here sitting on top of it and I thought one of these was a schematic. So uh, I think the first thing that's in order since I did see smoke is a, uh, a very good visual inspection. We definitely will definite, yeah, definite we want to look at the uh, input components like any thermistors, fuses, and as far as what's drawing the 16 or 15 or 16 watts, I guess uh, one way to figure that out would be just to get the FLIR F uh, IR camera and see what's getting warm in here. It might be something to do with this, and I'm not sure exactly what that's powering. Anyway, uh, let me get get some magnifying glasses on and get in here and do a good visual inspection. So the first thing I think I need to do is correct, possibly correct the year that I stated because that was based on the schematics that I had sitting on top of the TV which were for a different uh, Zenith chassis. So I have a feeling this is later than that. Uh, let me go and dig out the appropriate schematic for the 14 DC 15 chassis and then we can go from there. This is interesting there's two wires here they're they're not quite touching but almost and it looks like they've in the first video this t television had a mouse nest in it and I, I guess I didn't notice this where the mice the rodents had stripped the insulation off the wiring so this yeah that's a that's a, a, a bit of a risky situation there yes rodents will do that let's try that again uh, 1973 not 1970 all right so so the power comes in here We don't have a remote control. Comes down to this transformer, which is like an auto former uh, configuration, and we have 6.3 volts there. AC. I'm not quite sure what the point of this is. Uh, it looks like low voltage supply, so this gives us uh, 24 volts. I wonder if that's where our 
20 watts or so is coming from. And then we got another fuse up here and this goes to a 4 ohm resistor. 300, it uses a doubler circuit here so it's got a capacitor in series and then a capacitor going to ground and then filter capacitors over here that's where our 265 volts comes from so the first thing we want to do is we want to check these this fuse and see where do the yeah the well yeah the filaments also come out off of this this does not use the thermistor in series with the B plus and the VDR like I was thinking this is a more modern this is one of the end of the end of the era tube sets one of the very final tube sets so you in the older ones this was in series and then there was a VDR that fed the degaussing circuit so uh, we want to look at this fuse because it appears that all of this is dead. The filaments are dead. The B plus I don't think is there with only 20 watts. So let's check that fuse. And if that fuse is blown, then something's got to be shorted. Uh, fuses don't just blow for happiness reasons. They blow because something over here is loading the fuse down. All right, this fuse is measuring five ohms. This fuse is measuring 5 ohms. This fuse is measuring 1 ohm. All right, let's go about this a different and better way. I'm measuring AC volts. I've got, I'm measuring 600 millivolts drop across the fuse on the right and no drop across the fuse on the left. If the fuse was open, I'd be measuring full line voltage. It's a better test than the ohms test. Okay, from the fuse, it goes here to the thermistor, then it goes to a 4 watt, uh, 18 ohm. This thermistor is used to degauss, and if this was working, then we could possibly, that might be why we see the wattage surge when we first turn the set on. So let's feel this thermistor and see if it's hot. Okay, here's a thermistor and it is hot. And that's something we could have seen with the FLIR meter. So next we need to look for this 4 ohm resistor. Alright, there's the resistor in a very inaccessible place. And I'm only measuring 300 millivolts drop across it. So what is going on here? Okay, well the 4 ohm resistor is right here and it's in probably one of the worst places to get to. But it checks okay. So I came down to my doubler circuit here. And this is where the line 120 volts AC comes in. Then these are our two rectifiers here in our doubler. And I checked the, I guess you'd call it the low voltage, not... 24 volt low voltage but the you know the B plus supply and I have 328 volts here so that leads me to believe it's an open tube filament um, I'm pretty sure I heard like a sizzling and and smelled some smoke when this thing popped and died and an open tube filament you know would not if a tube filament blew out it would not cause that type of symptom so what I'm next thing to do is since this is a series string set is to go through and I've done videos on this before and basically follow the filament chain with the voltmeter and there's really two ways you can do this you could do it with the power off using the ohm scale or you could do it with the power on using the voltage and basically go step by step until you lose the voltage, meaning that you you have an open circuit. I prefer to use voltage. It's always best to test stuff under a load in real world conditions. Uh, it's a little bit more dangerous, of course, but 
it's better to do it in real world conditions if you can uh, just just because if there's an open or high resistance it might show up only under load and not under you know the meters low current ohm test all right here's what we're gonna do we're gonna clip one lead of the meter here to ground and we're gonna start with the other lead of the meter here we're gonna go here then here then here then here then here we're just gonna keep following the chain and we should have line voltage here 120 and then because the because the chain is broken it's gonna stay 120 until we find the open so we'll start here with V10 and right here is the chart which designates which V I guess for valve so we'll start with V10 and we'll just start following the chain so on all these compactrons it appears that pin 1 and 12 are the filament so better with it or without it so 1 and 12 are the basically between the spacer designator locator thingy so uh, the voltage comes in right where that 0.22 capacitor is that's pin 1 and then it exits on pin 12 and then it comes over here and it enters on pin 1 you can see there and then exits on pin 12 and then comes down here pin 1 exits on 12 so you just follow the chain AC volts so we'll start here on pin 1 we have 120 volts right on right on the number okay then we'll go over here get on pin 12 that's not enough light for it to focus all right so on pin 12 we have zero volts really that defies Murphy's law usually Murphy's law would say the first the last thing you test um, is where the problem is but in this case it looks like we're having a good luck well bittersweet because that's the horizontal output tube let me try And that's going to be some high, high voltage filament voltage series string tube I don't have. That's probably also used for CB radio linears. It's like $200 on eBay. And the schematic says it's a 20LF6. And, and that probably is because a 6LF6 is a $200 CB radio linear tube so crap and it is a 20 LF6 and attention attaching an ohm meter between pins 1 and 12 yields open so unfortunately vacuum bulb exceeds value of television all right, this is a this 20LF6 is a $65 tube on eBay, new, old stock. You can get used ones for about $40, but who would pay $40 for something the filament could blow out on tomorrow? There's one thing I want to do before I my spreadsheet says I has has one. My spreadsheet says I has one. So what what I want to do is I'm going to jump a light bulb in here because see that disk capacitor right there that's going from uh, pin one to ground if that was shorted it would blow my 
it would put the 420 volts across my new 20 LF6 and I don't want to risk that. So I'm going to put a 40 watt light bulb in here. We'll power it up. The 40 watt light bulb is substituted for the 20 LF6 fil filament. And that's interesting, that's showing 105 volts drop across that light bulb. So if I pull another one of these out, the light bulb should go out. I could find one that's not stuck in the socket, that's not welded in. Alright, well that looks good. I pulled the 6Z10 or 10Z10 out. And uh, I pulled that out and the light went off and the voltage went to zero. I just want to make sure before I stick another tube in there that one of these snubbing capacitor bypass capacitors isn't shorted. I don't know if it's good. Uh, it used, looks like Japanese made 20 LF6. Um, here we go. I'm gonna a lot better. So basically the filament string in this thing is 80 watts or 85 watts. Wow, that's incredible. That's an incredible amount of heat. Alright, well, no high voltage and hardly any arc to speak of, so I would say that 20 LF6 is dead unfortunately because the TV was working up until it fully died so alright this thing tests full smack so what's going on here what's going on with this TV all right, I started checking my voltages on the pins of this 20 LF6, and I notice on pin two, which is the cathode, it's at uh, 281 volts, which would indicate that that cathode fuse is open. So maybe when the filament blew, it shorted to the cathode and blew the cathode fuse open. Um, I should be able to just jump that with the meter. Hell with it, we'll just do it live here. And I heard the horizontal kick in. And there we go. And we have 190 milliamps it looks like. Let's see. 189 milliamps and we have a raster and uh, it says 200 and these are these crappy low resolution SAMS scans from the download that's why I like having my own um, library of SAMS because you can hardly read this crap so get it together sams yeah i have a subscription but man you're you know scan them so they're 20 megabytes each you know crank the resolution way up so we can i mean look at that you know so we can we can actually read this stuff you know I, i'm telling people all the time you know buy sams pay for the sams it'll save you time and then you you over compress the downloads and people get stuff like this it's not you know crank up the resolution so anyway we got a black blown cathode fuse here wherever that might be so this little box right here this guy right here is that bell fuse they think they call it a bell fuse which is a half amp bell fuse for the 
horizontal output cathode and like I said when the filament busted it must have the filament must have shorted to the cathode tube and popped this fuse and these fuses are open and that must be the smoke that I heard this thing sizzling and smoking must have been what I witnessed uh, so we need to get a new cathode fuse or just jumper or glass one uh, uh, across the bottom to save the uh, appearance of this fine specimen of a rusted Zenith 14 DC 15. Also I would mention that a half an amp fuse would not protect the tube if say the flyback was to short the tube would never draw a half an amp. The tube would red plate and blow up before that fuse ever blew. So that fuse is probably there just in the event that what occurred occurred. Because it's not to protect the tube, it's to protect in case there's a catastrophic short in the tube from setting something on fire. It's pretty interesting. Introducing the first ever Nissan Kicks with the starting MSRP of just $17,990. Experience Kicks for yourself only at your local Nissan store. Live from the broadcast center in Los Angeles, this is KCAL 9 News at 8. There it is! I am here before you today saying the words I have never wanted to say. Giving the speech I have never wanted to give. My father is gone. A man who seldom rested is laid to rest. And his absence is tangible, like the silence after a mighty roar. God bless John McCain. God bless this country and serve so long. Nowadays, a solemn salute and some sharp digs as the nation honors the passing of the American patriot and maverick politician, John McCain. Good evening, everybody. I'm Peter Downs. And I'm Suzanne Marquez. Heartfelt tributes to the late Arizona senator echoed throughout the Washington National Cathedral today. I know the hate comments are going to flow in, but seriously, like six days of this commercial free, pretty much, on every news station. I mean, I guess this is the end, so it's not commercial free, but... Yes, the greatest American to have ever lived. Ever! When my father got sick, when I asked him what he wanted me to do with this eulogy... The lovely Zenith Buzzomatic detector circuit. Audio detector circuit. And it works a lot better with different, um, a different converter box. It wouldn't buzz as much. Trump, Arizona senator and father of seven had wanted this service to send a message about unity. So he asked the two men who beat him in his bids for the White House to eulogize him today. After all, what better way to get a last laugh than to make George and I say nice things about him to a national audience? The attendees saw some of their words as a rebuke of the current president. John detested the abuse of power, could not abide bigots and swaggering despots. He understood that if we get in the habit of bending the truth to suit political expediency or party orthodoxy, our democracy will not work. President Trump famously mocked McCain's five years in a Vietnamese cell. He's a war hero because he was captured. I like people that weren't captured, okay? Today, as his daughter looked on, McCain's daughter settled the score. We gather here to mourn the passing of American greatness. The real thing, not cheap rhetoric from men who will never come near the sacrifice he gave so willingly, nor the opportunistic appropriation of those who live lives of comfort and privilege. All right, I'm done. Served. Work that teleprompter. Trying to show the failure point of the filament there, and you can see where it's burned off. See where the two white filament leads come out of the tube? That one is burned off right there. This one over here is still connected. 
that one's connected that one there is burned off so when it I I measured the resistance from the one that's still connected to the cathode tube and it's good see that's the cathode tube right there the the filaments inside that little tube that glows red that emits the electrons yeah it's hard to focus but you can see it's hard to hold the camera still uh, but you can see where it burned off right there I sure hope I can get Henry Kissinger to speak at my funeral now I wonder how much of that guy is human and how much is solid state anyway I before I patch this thing up and put it back together now that we know what's wrong with it um, I'd like to go through and use my little audio check here and check a bunch of these little electrolytics you can see that one there has a date code of 72 but there's a bunch of those in there and they're all niche con and the TV works fairly well so I can't see their them being open but it would be kind of fun to test them real quick figure out who we want to listen to this morning maybe we'll do some more Mrs. Miller all right today's selection will be the B-52s to test capacitors this blue one here is a 10 UF that sounds about right That's a 100 UF. That might be slightly reduced. That one sounds a little bit low. This little gray one right here, this is a 1 UF. It's gone. There's nothing there. That one should sound like just treble getting through. It's gone. Dead. It's a 200. Might be okay, but it might be a little reduced. This one here is a four microfarad. It's low capacitance and low ESR. Sounds weak. That one there is okay. If it's a one microfarad, I can't see it. And here it's just high end getting through. That one there is okay. That one there sounds very weak to me. You get that, that distortion is some bleed through that's bypassing the capacitor through a diode or something. All right, let's uh, quickly do this multi-section electrolytic here. So to start bypassed, let's uh, crank it up. I'm trying to get the maximum punch we can. All right, multi-section electrolytic. All right, that section sounds low microfarad, but not low ESR. It's a little bit higher microfarad. That section there is dead. <laughs> Nobody home. <laughs> So this is kind of a good demonstration as I go from here to here to here. This section's completely dead. This section's probably about 100 microfarads. This one's probably about 10, and this one's probably about 4. So listen to the difference. So you can hear how the base filters off as the microfarads go down. I can't believe that 
This section is dead right here. Totally open. All right, let's test this one. This looks like a two section right here. This almost has to be working for us to have good B plus. Okay, this four microfarad here connected to the 140 volt source. That is this section of this electrolytic that's open. Now let's see where this one is up here. All right, this capacitor here is part of the color killer circuit. That's probably why it being dead is not really affecting the performance too bad. This one here could be causing color smearing and other things. Um, I always thought that the color smearing was due to the CRT being very marginal at best. It, it's, it's weak. This is a high hour set. You can tell by the work that's been done on it and the amount of dirt and crust. It's, it's a high hour set, so it's not going to be a beauty by any stretch of the imagination. And that one there is just a filter. So there's, I'm going to make notes. I'm going to make a copy of the schematic and I'm going to put it in, in inside the set. And I'm going to make notes of everything I find. And I've actually exchanged it and I'm using a 19 inch set in its place, a 19 inch Zenith. So if I ever decide to bring this one back into service, I'll have notes and I'll get the capacitors. And I, I think probably this and this should be changed too. And these are 1000 volt ones, so these are going to have to be uh, purchased, not something I have in my inventory. Here's something Sam's did not many people know about, and I actually have quite a few of these. And these are, they call them advanced schematics, they're, they're the, just the factory schematic. So this is the actual schematic from the Zenith service manual, and they cover, I don't know, there were tons of them that came out, I think one a month or something. And so what I did is I photocopied the schematic, see, courtesy Zenith Sales Corp. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to, I made notes on it, I'm going to fold it up and put it in the TV for future uh, diagnostic notes.